This week, AKC Live has some nibbles and bits, World Dog Day festivities, a teenager who competes in agility, and some good old-fashioned mud. So stay tuned for all that and much, much more, all on AKC Live. Hi, I'm Sam Ryan, and this is AKC Live, bringing you the latest dog news and entertainment from the American Kennel Club. We're going to begin in Sedalia, Missouri, where the Master Amateur Retriever Club held its third annual Invitational, dedicated to the amateur handler. Now, retrievers and their owners train year-round to show off their hunting skills at this event. So let's take a look. We are here in Sedalia, Missouri, at the Master Amateur Invitational Retriever event. Once a year, duck hunters and the athletic retrievers they've raised come from all over to compete in what is essentially the duck hunting Olympics. There's 160 dogs entered from just about every state in the union. Golden retrievers. Yellow and uh, black and chocolate uh, Labradors. Uh, some of the pointer breeds. Chesapeake Bay retrievers. Dogs that are bred for the ability and the drive to retrieve. The retriever test simulates the hunt in the field. It's far more challenging than a game of fetch the bird. The dogs are asked to retrieve birds from what we call dead bird stations. Those birds are launched on the request of the judges. The three birds go down and the dog watches the three birds go down, standing by the handler. And then the handler sends the dog for all three birds, uh, which the dog has to retrieve, remembering where the birds are. Tracking multiple birds in a massive field requires discipline, keen observation, and years of training. And the test isn't even over yet. You're asked to pick up those three marks, and then you're asked to do things like retrieve a dead bird blind. For the blind, the dog doesn't see where the bird is placed and counts on the owner to send him in the right direction. It's a team sport. And the terrain is never the same, just to keep things interesting. But on this level in a national event, we will have six different series and we go to six different locations and set up six different tests and the dogs continue to qualify with each test. If they pass, they carry on to the last one. If they make it through the six tests, then they are a qualified master amateur winner. And like any good Olympics, these dogs have to stick the landing under the pressure of the spotlight. So there's some disappointment. But when you win one, oh yeah. <laughs> when you, you know, when you, when the dog comes out there and just hammers the test. And getting an attaboy from your peers when you do, your dog does a good job. Then you get some, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's fun. But pressure aside, these duck hunters have a bond that runs deep. The thing that I love about this event is the people. Some of these guys I've known for 30 years, and you just people you would never ever in a million years have encountered in the normal life, the common interest is the dogs. And let's be honest, we all really came here for the dogs. It is a passion and a drive that is so strong in these dogs that it can't be obstructed. It's very interesting to watch these dogs work. And most people have no concept of how trainable and how intelligent these dogs are. And in other dog news, the American Rottweiler Club held its 38th National Specialty Show May 14th through the 19th. Well, the best of breed was won by Mickey. Mickey is bred by Julie Sanson, C.L. Rawlings, and Evelyn Pfeiffer. He's owned by Jody Krim and Greg Payne and handled by Ashley Watkins. Well, the Flat-Coated Retriever Society of America held its 41st National Specialty Show. That was May 21st through 25th. Best of Breed was won by Fanny. Fanny is bred by Rebecca Wilsey Brewer and Cheryl Kistner, owned by Cheryl Kistner and Marilyn Wilcox, and handled by Taylor Stevenson. And the English Cocker Spaniel Club of America held its 77th National Specialty Show May 22nd through the 25th. Best of Breed was won by Enron. Enron is bred by Bonnie, Evan, and Stacy Threlfall, owned by Karen Florentine and shown by Evan Threlfall. Congratulations to all. 
Okay, so you may have heard about a Tough Mudder run or an obstacle race for humans, right? Has anyone participated in it? What about one for dogs, though? Well, the U.S. Canine Biathlon took place May 19th and 20th in Anniston, Alabama. You may wonder what a canine biathlon looks like. Well, we're going to show you right here. It's a fun-filled, mud-filled weekend where dog and canine partner come together to test their bond and stamina in a three-and-a-half-mile obstacle course in the mud. Now, this year, about 800 thrill seekers of all ages and experience levels participated, more than double from the previous year, where the youngest participant was only four years old. Now, scores were determined by course time and the age of both the runner and the canine partner. Winners are awarded in civilian, police, military, veteran, and dirtiest dog categories. That's a fun one, right? The prize is bragging rights and a shower. So if you are tired of the same old 5K or 10K runs, keep this one in mind as an alternate race. But remember, it's going to get real dirty. Registration for the 2019 U.S. Canine Biathlon is open now, and the dates are May 18th and 19th, 2019. You can learn more at uscaninebiathlon.com and read about an inspiring biathlon competitor battling terminal cancer in the March and April issue of AKC's Family Dog magazine. Well, far away from things mud, television personality Lisa Vanderpump and her foundation staged World Dog Day in Los Angeles. Now, the Vanderpump Dog Foundation says this day is a day that focuses on the celebration of dogs while raising awareness about global dog abuse. AKC TV was there. So World Dog Day is a carnival for dogs, and it's meant to really celebrate your dogs and our furry friends, as well as showing the antithesis of what a true dog festival is um, with the Yulin Dog Meat Festival. Yulin Festival is um, in Yulin, China. They celebrate the dog meat industry, unfortunately, and so they not only eat the animals, but they think the more they abuse the animal and torture the animal, the better the meat tastes. And that's just horrible, because no living thing should ever be tortured on this planet. with their dogs. We've got 45 vendors. We have uh, Vanderpump dogs, Vanderpump pets here. We've got a wave truck uh, right here in West Hollywood Park doing it every year. World Dog Day is the perfect day to bring your family and support an organization that you care about. We're a very animal friendly city, so we love the fact that uh, Lisa supports dogs all over the world. Dogs, hungry dogs, and one of them is here. Oh my gosh, I mean, I love dogs. Dogs are kind of my life. Um, We've had so many fosters in our house. Keeping with celebrating dogs, this week marks Pet Appreciation Week. And I know, when don't we appreciate our canine friends? But since this week does exist, we are marking it off with tips on how you can demonstrate some canine love. So how about give your dog a new toy? What about teach your dog a new trick? Or even schedule a doggy play date? Take your dog on a hike or a long walk. Make a special treat for your dog. All those sound fantastic. So if you're wondering what special treat to make, we've got a recipe for you.
right, Popeyes look nutritious and delicious and really easy to make, too. Well, the American Kennel Club appreciates dogs and those who are dedicated to the sport of purebreds. And they've recently announced the 2018 Junior Scholarship recipients. The award goes out to 23 exceptional students from around the country. And joining us today is one of the Junior Scholarship winners, Claire O'Neill. First of all, Claire, congratulations to you. What was your reaction you. when you heard you were the recipient? I just saw Amma take off. She was on your lap when yeah. you were the recipient of this award. Yeah, um, obviously I was really, really thankful. AKC has done a lot for me as a junior and in general for my academic career and my agility career. So I'm really thankful that they were able to um, help me out with paying for college, which is a big deal. What has it meant to you to compete as a junior? It's been a lot because I'm able to represent a large group of people, especially since the U.S. is so spread out. You don't see many juniors around you. Um, I could I meet a new junior, hear of a new junior every day that is in like the East Coast or something that I've just never met. Um, so it means a lot that I'm able to represent the U.S. on a junior team and um, juniors as a whole. Now, Claire, for those who don't uh, realize this, to qualify for this award, one has to be involved in a club and involved in AKC events. I actually had the chance to sit down with you at the National Agility Championship in Reno, Nevada, uh, a couple of months ago before this award went out, and you decided to talk about your agility. So let's take a look back at this. Joined now by Claire O'Neill and Ama. Hello, Ama. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Junior handler, you're here, but you're competing in the regular class, so yeah. you're competing against adults as well. How long have you been doing this? Uh, since I was 11, my mom used to go to classes and stuff, and tra she trained her um, when she was really young. My older daughters didn't want to watch Claire, so I started taking her with me to class. And she was about eight and my instructor then let Claire go to the back of the class. So then Claire was just playing on the equipment. She was jumping the jumps herself, jumping with the dog over the jumps and crawling with the dog through the tunnel and just having a lot of fun. Eventually I just asked if I could try it and I kind of stole her from my mom. She was 10 and we were at a trial where I was signed up to run and Claire looked at me and she said, I want to run Ama today. <laughs> I was like, really? And I thought, why not? So I let her, and I never got my dog back. <laughs> You're a high school senior right now. Yeah. You have college in the future. You yeah. play volleyball. How do you juggle it all? I just kind of do it. I don't really think about it too much. Every weekend that I don't have volleyball, I have agility. And it's kind of always been just normal, and I kind of just do it because I love doing them. How does your youth and athleticism benefit you? I'm definitely able to get a lot more places rarely ever do rear crosses. I mainly do front crosses and uh, quite a bit of blinds. And also, I like running fast. Moving on to the European Open, the junior team. Tell me a little bit about that and how that got started and your part in that. Pretty much, it started in 2012 as the first team. I sent in like a video tryout. They set up a course and then you just send it to the coach and then I was selected. I actually got third combined in Italy, 2014. That was probably the most amazing year. The people in Europe were so supportive of us. But as we went up, the whole audience was screaming, USA, USA. I said, what can I do to make this event like more amazing for you? She said, let's get other kids. And then the year after that, we got a team and more people came and then it's kind of just grown from there. We were able to take all that and spread the word and kids have slowly started coming. Do you find young prospective handlers come up to you, they want to pick your brain, they want to talk to you, or young girls just looking up at you and all? I see a lot of people looking up at me. It's definitely a good position to be put in because a lot of younger kids can see that it can be done. You don't have to be older and like own a house and have a dog, you can be in elementary school, middle school, high school, whatever, and, and compete internationally. What's next for you? Well, I'm going to college. I'll be playing volleyball, and that's the fall season, so probably won't be able to do much agility, but I'm considering taking one of my dogs with me to college, and then kind of just try to continue working with them. They'll still be getting training and stuff with my mom. 
been just like an amazing journey. It's really sad to see her um, not be a junior anymore, but I'm sure she'll do well as an adult. Okay, Claire, so last we left you when we saw that you were still visiting schools, still deciding on schools. Let me see that hoodie. There you go. So it looks like you decided on Fordham. Congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, you know, you said you were hoping to bring Ama or, or one of your dogs with you. Um, is that still a possibility? I really want to. I'm not sure how realistic it is. Uh, definitely not for the first semester when I will be in season playing volleyball. It's not fair for me or the dog. Mm -hmm. um, but like maybe maybe like next year or something in the spring when it's it's less um, time commitment. So maybe. Well, I hope so. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And what are you most looking forward to uh, coming up for the trip in Europe? It's the, the last year that I can go to the Junior European Open and it's the country where my dogs are from. And they, they really love the water and not, not going in the water, but like being on the water. Um, so I'm I, whenever they're around water, they're like, like their faces just light up. So I'm really excited for that. Oh, well, best of luck in Europe and best of luck at Fordham. Congratulations, Claire. Thank you. Thank you. We will be back next week. Until then, you can find more Good Dog TV at akc.tv. June 8th is National Best Friend Day. So we leave you with many good dog moments from your submissions to honor your canine best friend. I'm Sam Ryan. Thanks for watching AKC Live.